Maxwell Chikumbutso's car rolled quietly onto the test track under a radiant sky, its glossy frame gleaming like a vision from the future. A gentle hum was all it emitted as it powered up, already breaking from the norm by not needing a plug or external charger. Observers lined the sidelines, some skeptical, some wide-eyed, all curious. The Tesla Model S Plaid, sleek and formidable, pulled up beside it with a thunderous silence of its own. The stage was set for what many were calling the most important comparison in the history of electric vehicles. Maxwell himself stood near his creation, composed yet electric with anticipation. Reporters, engineers, and curious onlookers buzzed around, their attention torn between legacy and innovation. For years, Tesla had ruled the EV market with revolutionary batteries, blistering speed, and a cult-like following. But now, a self-taught Zimbabwean inventor claimed to have created a car that could power itself indefinitely. Whispers of magnetics, radio frequencies, and energy harvesting had turned Chikumbutso's car into a mystery wrapped in engineering wonder. The first part of the test was simple, acceleration. Tesla's Plaid had long held a reputation for going from zero to 60 miles per hour in under two seconds. But as the countdown began, eyes were fixed on Chikumbutso's machine. Both cars took off in an instant, a blur of motion, electric torque, and digital roar. Tesla surged ahead by a whisper, reaching the marker milliseconds before the prototype. But then something odd happened. Chikumbutso's car maintained that speed effortlessly, its power delivery strangely linear and unrelenting. Where the Tesla began to draw power more aggressively and visibly strain, the Chikumbutso car glided as if fueled by air. There were no stops for charging. There were no overheating warnings. Chikumbutso's car just kept going. The second round focused on range, an area where Tesla excelled with its 400-plus mile claim. But Maxwell's team had invited observers for a continuous loop test, letting both vehicles drive until one gave up. The Tesla lasted nearly 430 miles before needing a charge. Chikumbutso's car? It was still going after 1,000 miles, and it kept going the next day. Energy monitors showed consistent input and output, indicating self-replenishment. Experts were stunned. The vehicle used Chikumbutso's proprietary greener power machine, GPM, a blend of radio frequency energy harvesting and advanced magnetic conversion. This wasn't just a car with a solar panel slapped on top. It was an entirely new way of thinking about energy. The third test involved terrain and weather. Both vehicles were taken off-road into rocky paths and icy inclines. Tesla performed well, its traction control and AWD system doing what it was programmed to do. Chikumbutso's car, however, adapted without noticeable struggle. Its adaptive suspension recalibrated in real time. Power delivery remained stable, even on ice. Energy output did not dip. There were no power surges or data errors. It seemed to thrive in chaos. Then came safety. Both cars were put through simulated crash scenarios and AI-driven emergency brakes. Tesla's famed autopilot responded quickly and with precision. But Chikumbutso's car featured a 3D sensory net that read the environment in real time. Its emergency reaction time was faster by a full 0.2 seconds. It avoided collisions others couldn't. Passengers inside reported barely feeling a jolt when evasive maneuvers occurred. Tesla had met its match and then some. The next evaluation focused on features. Tesla offered a massive infotainment system, over-the-air updates, and voice command integration. Chikumbutso's car offered something different. Its dashboard was projected into 3D space using augmented reality. No screens, just holograms. It used a custom OS designed with African languages embedded at its core. Its UI adapted to driver preference automatically. Climate, sound, driving modes, and seat configurations adjusted by interpreting tone and gesture. It was not just a car, it was a living assistant. While Tesla relied on known technologies pushed to their limits, Chikumbutso's machine felt like a completely new species. Range, power, autonomy, interface, adaptability, every aspect suggested the arrival of a new paradigm. Tesla's defenders argued scale, infrastructure, and production reliability. But supporters of Maxwell's vision pointed to history. 
Every disruption started with disbelief. Chikumbutso's car didn't just exist. It thrived under scrutiny. It didn't just run. It evolved in real time. Tesla was an electric car. Chikumbutso's was an electric intelligence. And as the tests concluded, even Elon Musk took note, tweeting, Interesting prototype from Africa. Watching closely, the world had just witnessed what might be the first true step beyond battery dependency. And the world would never be the same again. The morning after the tests, engineers gathered around the Chikumbutso prototype, combing through the data. Battery levels remained stable, seemingly unaffected by the distance or strain of the trial. There were no signs of traditional depletion, no warnings, and no thermal fatigue. Technicians from Germany and Japan reviewed the GPM unit under strict non-disclosure terms. Each confirmed that the energy harvesting mechanism was real and active. It wasn't pulling from solar, wind, or grid. It was generating usable power via ambient radio frequencies and converting magnetic pulses into continuous propulsion. The implications staggered them. Tesla, meanwhile, issued a statement congratulating Maxwell and acknowledging the innovation. But the tone carried caution, even doubt. The Tesla team demanded more standardized testing, which Maxwell's crew gladly accepted. Independent labs in Sweden, Canada, and the UAE were flown the prototype for stress testing. None could break it. Each trial revealed a machine that didn't just survive extreme environments, but thrived in them. Cold chambers, desert winds, radiation exposure all passed. At an altitude lab in Colorado, the car performed with zero degradation in power delivery. Aerodynamic modeling showed that the car had an ideal drag coefficient, but power curves remained suspiciously perfect. Some speculated that the energy generation was so efficient that aerodynamic strain became a non-issue. Maxwell's only response to queries was a quiet smile and a reminder, the future doesn't wait. Public opinion split into two camps. One believed Maxwell had ushered in a new age of perpetual motion. The other demanded an explanation grounded in physics. But physics was evolving too. The theories that powered Tesla's success had once been radical. Now Chikumbutso's tech was doing the same. University partnerships began forming overnight. MIT invited Maxwell for a closed-door summit. Harvard wanted to license the GPM system for microgrids. In Nairobi, Lagos, and Accra, governments saw an opportunity to leapfrog decades of grid dependency. Tesla continued to innovate, introducing newer Plaid variants with enhanced batteries. But the narrative had shifted. Tesla's question was no longer, how far can we go on one charge? It became, how do we catch up with infinite range? Maxwell's team released a public software development kit. Tinkerers, coders, and engineers flooded the forums, exploring the car's OS. The open source interface allowed third-party plugins and hardware extensions. A Ghanaian startup added a farming AI mode. A South African company created a school bus variant powered by the same tech. The innovation spread like wildfire. Tesla remained competitive, integrating its own solar charging roofs and more efficient motors. But it still needed the sun. Maxwell's car needed motion and air. It didn't idle. It existed. Its drive system regenerated energy even at a standstill using microvibrations. A mechanic in Morocco described it as a car that feeds itself on presence. Meanwhile, buyers started lining up. Maxwell refused billion-dollar offers from corporations. He chose a different path, manufacturing in Africa. Assembly plants rose in Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Kenya. Jobs multiplied. Local economies surged. Young people saw the future not just in the West, but in their backyards. Education initiatives launched to support electric engineering in African universities. Tesla still led in global sales, but Chikambutso's name echoed in new tech corridors. He had built more than a car. He had built a movement. His design was made modular. It adapted to bikes, boats, even drones. Each version carried the same DNA, freedom from the grid. Tesla, in response, opened a new R&D division dedicated to RF power exploration. Maxwell responded with his own bold step, a prototype aircraft based on the same energy principle. No jet fuel, 
No battery swap. Just lift, glide, and regenerate. The EV war had become an evolution. Tesla was no longer just a tech company. It was a legacy contender in a fight against a limitless concept. Maxwell's car was never about speed or branding. It was about principle, mobility without depletion. Every mile driven was proof that the impossible wasn't. In schools, kids built models of the GPM system. In labs, researchers chased its math. In boardrooms, CEOs whispered its name. Chikambutso had not just challenged Tesla. He had challenged convention. And as more nations invited him to collaborate, he issued a quiet reminder. This isn't a competition, he said. This is liberation. The ultimate showdown didn't end with a trophy. It ended with a question. What happens when cars no longer need fuel? For the first time in history, the answer didn't come from Silicon Valley. It came from Africa. The world did not wait long to react to what had unfolded between Chikambutso's car and the Tesla. Within weeks, footage of the showdown was circulating globally, reaching millions across YouTube, X, and African media outlets. Commentators hailed it as a technological awakening, while others still viewed it with intense scrutiny. But something undeniable had occurred. A silent revolution was gaining volume. In California, Tesla engineers began studying patents related to radio frequency harvesting and ambient magnetic systems. But Maxwell's technology remained elusive, cloaked in custom engineering and a proprietary system of energy cycling that bypassed known limits. Meanwhile, Universities in Africa launched new curriculums focused on energy autonomy and Chikambutso's research philosophy. His principle was simple. A machine should give more than it takes. The third-party labs that tested his car were overwhelmed with international demands to license parts of the tech. Yet Maxwell resisted the temptation to monetize it too quickly. He insisted it must serve people before profit. That message resonated across the global South, where infrastructure often failed to reach rural communities. Maxwell's vision offered these regions something profound, independence. In Tanzania, his vehicles were soon moving between towns without ever stopping to refuel or recharge. In Ethiopia, agricultural variants began helping farmers transport harvests without any recurring fuel cost. In the Congo, engineers adapted the design to create water pumps powered by the same magnetic system. It was a domino effect, and the impact was cultural as much as it was mechanical. Young inventors looked to Chikambutso not just as a creator, but as a symbol of African potential. African television broadcasted panels and debates around power sovereignty and energy democratization. Tesla tried to catch up by releasing a semi-autonomous truck with integrated solar panels, but it still required sunlight and time. Maxwell's trucks simply drove. They didn't need the grid, didn't need fuel, and didn't stop. International media finally began acknowledging that something significant had happened. Perhaps something even greater than Tesla's first roadster. Talks started about regulation, global collaboration, and scaling. But Maxwell remained firm. Africa would lead the deployment. The technology would not be exported just for others to profit. It would be grown where it was born. In Zimbabwe, Local manufacturing lines expanded production to meet demand. In Malawi and Rwanda, engineers began fabricating components based on blueprints provided by Maxwell's Open Lab movement. Hackers tried to decode the core OS of the GPM system but failed due to its multi-layered encryption model. The system recognized foreign tampering and shut down within microseconds. Still, Maxwell released a development simulator to allow students to test energy logic without compromising proprietary code. The simulator became a global phenomenon. In China, Japan, Brazil, and Russia, coders tested theoretical vehicles inside Maxwell's energy sandbox. Challenges were launched. Build a car that generates its own power using physics alone. The ripple effect moved far beyond EVs. Medical devices in remote hospitals began testing GPM-based power units. Rural clinics no longer feared blackouts. In Somalia, a GPM-powered drone delivered medicine across rebel-controlled terrain without relying on traditional supply lines. It was stealthy, silent, and self-charging. Elon Musk, in an interview with an American tech outlet, admitted, what Maxwell's doing isn't just impressive, 
it's paradigm breaking. The statement was seen as a signal. The rivalry was now something deeper, a mutual respect layered beneath competition. But Chikambutso continued moving forward without waiting. He unveiled the second generation of his car, sleeker, lighter, and even more efficient. This time it came with swarm communication abilities. Each vehicle could talk to others to optimize traffic, navigation, and efficiency. The GPM tech had evolved. The magnetics were now coupled with AI-driven field resonance adjustments. Simply put, the car learned how to generate power better over time. It was an autonomous energy organism on wheels. Tesla, in response, launched a collaborative initiative with MIT to explore ambient field propulsion. But the tech was still theoretical. Maxwell had already built it. The African Union signed an agreement to begin regional infrastructure based on Chikambutso's gridless philosophy. Charging stations were no longer needed. Instead, smart corridors would be lined with data relays for vehicle communication. No wires, no emissions, no dependency. Tesla remained admired, but now as a powerful legacy institution trying to adapt. Maxwell was the future, open, adaptable, and locally grounded. He partnered with education ministries to create maker labs inside rural schools. Kids built GPM miniatures. They understood energy not as something bought, but something built. A shift occurred globally. EV conversations no longer centered around battery life or charging speed. They focused on self-sufficiency and design minimalism. Maxwell's third gen. Carr introduced detachable AI pods for village-level tasks, farming, water transport, mobile lighting. No one had done this before. Cars were no longer luxury mobility tools. They were nodes in a decentralized ecosystem. And with every mile, Chikambutso's vision extended. He had gone beyond competing with Tesla. He had birthed something Tesla would eventually need to follow. Not just a car that doesn't charge, but a car that empowers. A car born not in factories, but in faith that the impossible could move. And now, the impossible moved every day across the roads of Africa.